Well, we've moved on uh, in our experiments with the Swarm satellite system and this uh, Swarm evaluation kit, which is a little uh, radio transceiver. It both transmits to and receives from the Swarm satellites. A uh, solar panel on top, uh, antenna for its transmitting and reception, and uh, a tripod for setting it outside. Uh, moved on from our experiments with email to uh, sending data to the Swarm satellites about uh, soil moisture and uh, temperature. And so we have a probe uh, hooked up here. The connection to the probe is coming out of the electronics box down here. The Swarm has the Swarm label on it. Um, just through a crack opening in it, so it's, that's not weatherproof and the cable's not weatherproof either so far. It's just a, a patchwork of uh, jumper cables and a ribbon cable <laughs> winding up at this uh, here at, at this probe, which uh, also needs to be weatherproofed. All the electronics need to be covered with a clear coat of polyurethane, and then uh, all the connections here and the plug need to be covered with a, a large uh, heat shrink tubing, and this whole uh, patchwork of of cables will be replaced with a single a much more suitable round cable here and that cable will hopefully be able to be inserted in this, uh, this opening, it's a spare opening in this larger plug here, there's a little rubber plug right here, hard to see because it's black on black and that should be large enough to accommodate this cable so that we'll have a permanent uh, uh, weatherproof uh, installation here for gathering data from the probe and, and uh, sending it off to the Swarm satellites. I've been using the temporary probe setup with the Swarm evaluation kit to uh, collect soil moisture and temperature data, transmit it to, to the Swarm satellites then when the Swarm satellite gets over a ground station, it downloads that uh, data to the Swarm server called the Hive. And uh, I'm logged on to the Hive here and I'm looking at uh, some of my recent messages. Uh, we can look at them one by one here. I have the top one selected now. And what the actual message looks like right here uh, as a timestamp coming from the GPS receiver. Uh, in the swarm uh, satellite modem and uh, a temperature in degrees Celsius and a moisture level which is dimensionless uh, but it's hard to get the sense of what's going on looking at these messages one by one so uh, luckily the uh, uh, the swarm in software engineers have provided an example script for uh, collecting data from this uh, uh, swarm hive uh, and processing it that uh, it's a Python script and I've edited it so that uh, um, let's see let's just show us logging in here up here we're logging in and then I've edited it so that it will do uh, a plotting of the data uh, reads the data into some uh, lists and uh, plots them on uh, two separate axes, uh, soil moisture and temperature on separate y-axes, and also calculates uh, the Pearson co uh, correlation coefficient and displays that on the graph. So we'll uh, close out of this and uh, get our get into DOS here where I'm going to run my Python program. And it's going now onto the Swarm Hive and it's um, collecting the data and plotting it. And we'll stretch the plot out a little bit here. Here on the left hand side we have the moisture level axis and the moisture values are plotted as blue dots. Um, on the right we've got the temperature y-axis and the temperatures are plotted on these uh, red dots. And down here we report the results of the uh, Pearson correlation coefficient calculation. We've got a sort of a, a mild inverse correlation going on here. 
a strong inverse correlation would be closer to negative one in value um, and uh, that's subject to a lot of a lot of things other than just the moisture and the uh, temperature so for example uh, at this point in the plot I removed the the probe from the soil uh, and laid it out on the porch just to see what uh, reading I would get uh, it dropped way down to close to the bottom here a reading of 400 <laughs> moisture level of 400 uh, compared to uh, its more typical values um, which we can see by using the crosshair that I built into this plot so a more typical value here let's say right here would be something between 700 and 750 something a little less than 725 there um, and then of course since I had the the probe instead of being in the dirt laying on the porch in the sunlight the uh, the temperature went up to a very unlikely uh, nearly 70 degrees <laughs> of course the temperature around here hasn't been that high uh, much and so uh, that's because the thermometer in the sunshine <laughs> <laughs> and so that no doubt has added to the inverse correlation going on here and made it appear even stronger than it actually is. But uh, anyway, just kind of fun to play around with the, the plotting tools in Python to get this thing to happen. You can also just uh, uh, have the data printed out and import it into Excel and fuss around with it. Um, but uh, that's what's going on here so far. Um, hopefully we'll get the... Uh, weatherproof probe set up going and be able to leave the thing out um, outside for longer periods of time though I'm going to wait until uh, temperatures are generally above freezing to do that because uh, I don't think I'm going to get very good readings um, if the, the ground freezes <laughs> but uh, that's what's going on so far